And now it's time for another review by taproom.com. This time our product is a little different. Instead of looking at a piece of software or a book or something else being marketed, we're looking at someone being marketed, a personal home page. So how did he do? Let's take a look. First page looks very nice in my opinion. We instantly know whose page this is. We see Andrew's name on top in the middle. We see his picture. So really, if I've met him before, if I think I know him, I'll know instantly who it is I'm dealing with. That's great. As we see, picture, name, a little bit of design, that's fine. And then we have his tagline, physics and computer science, and a bit of theater at Cal. And unfortunately, I think this is really a, a lost opportunity. This tagline is really the meat of this page, the only text that really stands other than his name. And it really should stand for something. What is it? What is a physics and computer science in a bit of theater at Cal? What is at Cal? Is that at California? Is that at Caltech? Is that at California Berkeley? We don't know. What is his level? Is he a PhD student? Is he an undergraduate? Is he a high school student? Maybe he is just someone who happens to study physics and likes to do computer science and theater on the side. We have no idea what this means or what he is offering to people who visit this page. Moving on, buttons. I always love buttons. And it's great that he has a number of ways for people to contact him. There's the mail, Facebook, GitHub. For those of you who are unfamiliar, GitHub is a place where software engineers and programmers can share their code and show off their skills. And LinkedIn, of course, which will probably link to his resume. Let's proceed on. We've seen his front page. Let's check out his about. I would have liked to hear more about him. What makes him tick? What are his interests? What are the skills that he can provide? Yes, we know he's a physicist in training and a computer scientist in training, but computer science is a very big field, just as physics is a really big field. He could talk about interests in physics. For instance, does he like optics? Maybe he likes studying sound. Maybe he's like studying the way forces react on different things. For computer science, does he like software development? Is he interested in AI? Is he interested in quality assurance? An about section should really allow the viewer to understand what makes this person tick, what makes that person special, and what makes that person worthy of reading further about. Let's move on to the projects portion. Now, I think for anyone seeking an internship, the project section is actually the most important part of any website, certainly more important than mere courses taken, grades, or lists of personal interests. These projects demonstrate A, the skills that the person has, and B, the ability to actually produce things of value and a lot of people can talk the talk, but really projects show that they can walk the walk. Now, this is a very interesting menagerie of projects. And when I say interesting, I think interesting as in something that probably should be looked at by the owner of the website. Here we have six different boxes under the project section. And actually, as we pointed out before, one of these isn't really a project. GitHub is a website that stores projects. And although this link is important, we've already seen it earlier, and probably this can be moved away because unlike the others, it's not something that he built. It's really something that holds everything else that he built, the other five projects probably that he has listed. When anyone starts looking at anything on a website, he starts looking from the top left right here. So it is absolutely critical that he puts his most important project there in the top left. And here he selected SparkNotes Cleaner. Remove the distracting sidebar from SparkNotes so that you can focus on what's important, an extension for Google Chrome. There's some things I like about this. He has the name of the item right here. 
He tells us what exactly he did and gave us an idea of why it's important. And he told us about the technologies being used. I would have liked to have seen a little bit more description of what technologies are used. For instance, Google Chrome extensions tend to be written in JavaScript. JavaScript could be listed there. Not only would he benefit from SEO, but it would make him look more impressive because now he's not just doing Google Chrome, he's also doing JavaScript and maybe other things. I'm sure he could get HTML5 in there and some other items. But is this really the most important project that he's done? Remember, he's saying that he's a physicist and computer scientist with a bit of theater. And this essentially looks like it's a minor web tool. And you look at, for instance, this project here, LiquidSim, a simple n-body physics simulator rendering in smooth 60 FPS, 60 frames per second. Now, I have to admit, as an economist, I have no idea what an n-body physics simulator is, but I have the feeling that physicists and other people who would be interested in this project would certainly think much more highly of this uh, simulation for physics than this, something which can manipulate a website. I think one of the strengths of someone with a background in physics or the background in academic computer science is that they can build fancy algorithms that accomplish tasks that are very complicated for regular people to understand. Removing a portion of a GUI from a website isn't that. It's neat, it could be useful, but it's not demonstrating the core strengths that he has to bring to the problems that other corporations may face. I would certainly move something like this, liquid sim, further to the left. And if Sparks Notes Cleaner is really important, leave it on there, but move it somewhere that people will not see immediately and will probably spend less time on, like right here. Nevertheless, this is the first item. Let's open it up and see what we can see. Okay, there's a little accordion here. It's showing us two images. And let's go back to this first image. It moved rather quickly. Here's one image, Spark Notes. Okay, and here's another image. And it took me a little while to understand what I was trying to focus on. Yes, there's text here. I removed the distracting sidebar so you can focus on learning. But it's not obvious to the reader what exactly is being looked at normally we'll see a before and an after side by side with maybe a couple arrows demonstrating what it is that's changed. But here, I was looking at what turned out to be the after picture and then looking at what turned out to be the before picture and nothing had been removed. I had had these reversed in my mind. And I think being a little clearer, what's the before, what's the after would make a lot of sense. I would like to see three pictures personally, three static pictures so I can see the items side by side. The before, the before with maybe a circle around something that's annoying, and then the after where the something that's annoying is removed. Minor point, and this is more web design than my area of expertise, is that this page actually breaks the back button. If I were to hit back, I would actually leave Andrew's site this is actually a pop-up window, and I think making it look like a pop-up window would really help people understand how to navigate the site. But again, that's more web design. Let's take a look at Liquid Sim. I seem to be focused on that, a simple n-body physics simulator. I open this up, and okay, I've got the name, I've got a picture, and it says this is a simple n-body physics simulator and describes what it is. I think Again, I have no idea how complex this was to build, but this looks impressive. I would have loved to have seen some animation. He keeps telling me that this is a 60 frame per second item, that there's movement. Why isn't there an animated GIF here or an animated picture or even a movie with him describing what it is he built? This is screaming for more visibility for the user. Perhaps the physicist who visits or someone who visits doesn't want to get the code and doesn't want to see what it does and, and take all that time. But a picture, a moving picture, can really get him to understand what it is that's being built and how it works without making the user 
go and download and compile and run and do all these extra steps. One of the big purposes of a website is to take all this information that you have and make it easily understood, make it readily digestible by the viewer. And as many steps as you can remove for the viewer, the better. Okay, let's move on to experience. And now we have the experience section. And this is a great thing to add. Let's take a look at the information it provides the average person visiting. Okay, here we have our first little bit of confusion. Education, of course, for someone who's looking for an internship is very important to list. But immediately, I'm confused. UC Berkeley, and we have four years of expected study here, and College of San Mateo, which is another number of years, both in the exact or rather similar fields, physics, computer science, and math, physics and computer science. So immediately I'm wondering why is somebody spending essentially what looks like two sets of undergraduate studies in the fields of physics and computer science. Now it may be that this person is now studying at the PhD level. It may be that he's doing a second bachelor's and never actually finished the first. It may be something quite different entirely, but I think that this really should be clarified. If it's a second bachelor's, perhaps just drop this. This is a different degree. Definitely put the degrees that have been earned on here. Again, what you want to do is make this as easy to understand for the viewer. You never want him to say the scary word, huh? And here we can view the classes that are being taken. By the looks of it, and I'm not a physicist by training, it looks like these courses are the typical types that you would see in undergraduate programs. And certainly, to earn a bachelor's in computer science, you would need more than these two in particular. That being said, I don't really understand the point of this section. These are classes that any computer scientist, and I assume many physicists, would be studying. So I would probably remove them if it's important, if it does add value. Certainly remove the View Classes button. It doesn't save any space, and it makes the user expend a cognitive load clicking on it to see it. So either it adds value, show it, or it doesn't add value, remove it. Let's move on. Positions. OK, this is very nice. We have a list of positions that he's held and a description for each one. It doesn't look like these are perfectly aligned, but again, I'm not a web designer by trade, so we'll let that go. One general piece of advice that I would give anyone on a resume and certainly anyone who's sticking a resume on a web, is to make their experience look impressive and to focus on what is being accomplished rather than what the person does, what kind of effort he puts forward. So let's take a look at marketing assistant. Okay, marketing is a great field to be in and it's a great field to mix with the field of computer science. But here we have a description. I help maintain and augment the Cal Performance's website, calendar, and email systems. I think that could probably be rewritten to something a bit more impressive, web, web, web development and software systems management. That really is the same thing, but being able to say that you're a web developer rather than someone who augments websites really sounds pretty good and you can change it to web programmer or something like that, but really emphasize the fact that you're bringing real value. You're not just tweaking things. You are, you are building or changing uh, things from a technical standpoint and managing calendar and email systems from a technical standpoint. And I think that type of information would probably be well used for each of these one very strange peculiarity I found was this academic chair. Now, obviously, an honors project for a college is something that you'd want to stress, and that's a great thing to do. And here we have the description, worked with professors on semester-long interdisciplinary research projects, both in the sciences and humanities. 
presented research at two symposiums. So what's missing from this? Well, how about the title, the topic? What exactly is the research that you performed? Is it something interesting that you'd like to talk about? Well, list it here, maybe you link to it. If you can demonstrate that you have a skill in some field, whether it's obscure or common, you may become more attractive to possible people hiring you. Let's move down to honors and awards. Okay, here we have a number of honors, a number of awards. I'm not sure that presenter at an honors research symposium is an honor. I suppose it is. It's probably not the type of honor that I would be expecting. I would be expecting an honor that involves you receiving a trophy or a document or a certificate, but this probably is a very good thing to list. I think in general, I would try to squish this down a bit. This is taking up a very large section of the screen when compared to the rest of your resume. Perhaps put member Phi Beta Kappa on Society 2014 and just say, hey, member. And then perhaps list the years 2011, 2012, 2013. That would help squish the information down and really focus the viewer on the member Phi Beta Kappa. And I would think, and again, this depends upon the purpose of the website, I would actually remove references to fencing. Perhaps put the fencing portion on the about to help build out and round out your profile. But really, on something like a resume, you want people to focus on what value you're going to bring to the company. Now, it may be that you are bringing value to a company by being an expert fencer. Perhaps you're going to be working for a software simulation company or a fencing company. But the odds of that are rather low. So as someone who's writing the resume and someone who's presenting the resume to possible employers, I wouldn't use as much space for perhaps being the highest ranked fencer in junior men's saber for the Bay Area. While that's very impressive, in my mind, it's not as important as presenter at the Bay Area Community College Honors Research Symposium at UC Berkeley. Overall, very impressive. Just a matter of tweaking it and arranging it so that it really hits the viewer as strong as possible. And at the very bottom, we have copyright, copyright, two copyrights. Andrew Gleason, 2015. Overall, this is a great site, but I would suggest that Andrew think about what this website is for. Is it just a general page about you? Or is it a page about getting yourself employed either through an internship or through an actual permanent job? What I'd suggest is thinking about your tagline. Who are you? Are you a physics and computer science guy with a bit of theater? Or are you someone who has training in mathematics, in physics, and computer science? Someone who perhaps is really good at building simulations, physics simulations, with software engineering. All too often, I see many software engineers who have no formal training who are really good at building CRUD apps, basic applications that you create, the read, the update, the delete from databases. But what you're presenting is something much, much more impressive and much more worthy of higher amounts of payment. You are presenting yourself as someone who understands physics and the sciences and is formally trained in computer science. So what I would do is try to think about yourself as a simulation guy, and that would go throughout the entire page. Andrew Gleason, software simulation guy, perhaps something a bit more formal than that, but you get the idea about, I really enjoy simulations. Here are some of the things that I've been working on, my projects. Really take a look at this liquid sim, it's amazing. And this life simulator, every computer scientist worth his salt knows what Conway's game of life is, but you've done something very interesting. You've changed the way it works. Put that up there too. This is a famous simulation, focus on that. Overall, 
great website, you look like you're very impressive and you're gonna have a great career in front of you. It's just a matter of selling yourself, figuring out who you are, how you're gonna present yourself, and then letting that flow through your entire website. Great job and I look forward to seeing any revisions that you intend to make.